Hey, Caleb. How's it going? I was wondering if you'd gotten those uh, hinges and nails done for me. Oh, my. Wow. That's incredible. That's uh, just what I was oh, looking yeah. for. Much better than, you know, manufacturing. Oh, wow. That, that should be hinges, perfect. Too. They look great. Oh, man. Wow. Look at that. How did you make Wow. So, can you show me how, uh, how you made one of those nails? I'll take our bar, uh, draw that point down, and uh, interestingly, the, these old nails, they, they tapered them, but they're wider at the point in one direction than the other, and they're wider at the top the other dimension, oh, so when you drive them in, they grip. That's interesting. Um, you leave a little material at the end, the head, well. and we'll drop it in the header here. Hard parts of getting that head. Uh, you gotta work quickly, because you wanna work, drive that down and flatten it uh, before the nail cools off, so you can cool it, because uh, that'll shrink the nail. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if you keep hammering it till it's cold, uh, it'll be stuck in the header. That's something. So there's a real art to just even making a nail. I mean, I I would think that just getting it to the taper to be just right, uh, you know, so you cut that off mm -hmm. and then you drop it in there. And if the head isn't enough, it's going to go all the way through and you don't have a head. Exactly. That's more, that's something else. That's, so there's a real art to that. Amazing. So how did you, uh, how did you do these hinges? These, these are great. These, uh, start with flat uh, piece. Of course, our relief needs to be three quarters, so started about an inch and a half. Um, and the part that needed to be the barrel, uh, we need to draw down a little bit because yeah. um, just thin down, um, bend in a full eighth around that tight. Uh, be like very difficult. So um, just drew so the drawing out. You're talking about just making the metal thinner. Right. Hammering out. Yeah. That all. We laid these out together. Cut out the waste. Uh, so we actually took a, a cold cutting chisel. So a, and a chisel it through. A chisel. Yeah. So when when I think of a chisel, I think of a sharp edge. And if I hammer a chisel on this metal, it's the edge is going to be gone. So you must have a special kind of chisel for this. Yeah, it's a it's a we call it a cold chisel. I see. Cutting metal cold. Yeah. Um, and we took a file and just filed the uh, the shoulders of those. Uh, Got them all smooth, yeah. and uh, put it in the fire, heated it up about 2,000 degrees, and stuck in the vise and bent those barrels all the way over, wow. and then uh, heated them up with a pair of scroll tongs, just bent those, got them most of the way bent, and then uh, put the rod that would be the pin in there, and actually hammered it right down over that That's rod. A That's a real art. It, these look, these look wonderful. Wow. Yeah. So, did you put some sort of finish on these? Yeah, uh, a friend of mine's making a finish. It's a, a wax and oil mixture. Yeah. Uh, so that'll protect it. Well. Yeah. Oh, this is this is great. Well, I can't wait to use these in the project. And after you explain the process, I think I'll stick with woodworking. At least with woodworking, you can fix your mistakes a little easier. <laughs> so. I don't know. Uh, You're always looking for the board stretcher, and I can stretch my metal out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess that's true. Well, man, that's great. So I appreciate it, and uh, you'll have to come by and check out the project when it's yeah. when it's when it's done. So you've got uh, what 36 nails there, do you? We made a few extra, so you should have uh, 38 or so. Oh, perfect. Thanks a lot. There you are. Appreciate it. Yes, sir.
And there's the base. Hopefully we put the molding on the right side and not on the back side, but we did. Let's check it out. Here, let's stand it up and place it here on the bench. There we have it. Sits nicely. I'm fairly happy with that. I think the next step here after this glue sets up is to go ahead and just trim these dovetails just a little bit, trim some of the excess glue off, trim those dovetails, and then we'll turn our attention towards hinging the top. I'm going to go ahead and start insetting the hinges into the lid first. Um, I'm going to place this on here and scribe around each hinge. Being that they were hand forged, they will be subtly different. So I'll just scribe each one to fit in their prescribed location. I had Caleb make the hinges a little bit bigger than the originals so that I could have new. Um, wood to be able to screw the screws into. I felt like that would be stronger. Um, still following the same theme here, the same type of hinge that was originally here. So what I'm going to do now is just chop out that, that waste. fits in there like a glove. It's always nice when you're putting the hinges on that you clock the screws. Uh, that's a technique that's been around for years and years, but uh, what that means on these slotted screws is that you get all of the heads all lined up, the slots all lined up in the same direction. So I'm going to clock those. They're all lining up in the same direction. Well, I think we're ready now to start the finishing process. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to put the same milk paint finish that uh, this chest had originally. Now, if you remember, the back of this piece was not painted. Uh, we, we never, uh, there was never any paint on the back of the piece here. So I'm going to be careful to not get any paint on the back. They did that a lot of times if this was to be positioned up against a a wall or something, and they were trying to conserve the material, the paint. So um, I won't, uh, in keeping with the tradition here, I will not paint the back. Finishing is, I think, one of my favorite parts about a project because this is where all of your work comes together here. You can see it all Finish out. Hey Frank. Hello Kevin, how are you today? Pretty good, well we're here. Not sure if we've turned this sow's ear into a silk purse, but uh, we'll let oh, you make the call. <laughs> whoa, I guess so, in two and a half days. Wow, mama, what do you think? 
Well, if Mama likes it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the test. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Wow. That's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. I tried to use some of the same tools that the craftsman would have used the molding. I used uh, this molding plane here to create to create the molding there. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that matches there. So you made it off the chest and then cut it to go on? I did, yes. Yep. Did you have the nails? Did you? I actually had Caleb uh, hand forge the nails, so all the nails are all hand forged. Really? And uh, used uh, the same uh, scrub plane that he would have used to plane this. You could actually feel some of the undulations from the plane. Oh, yeah. I used some of the, I used the same plane for doing that. Uh, this plane was used for planing. Oh, wow. All that. And uh, Caleb actually made the hinges as well. So oh, he. Oh, wow. Back in the original place. Look yeah. at this. Wow. You never know. I left the original mark on the inside there, the original red mark. Hey, look at that. You know something? I had never noticed that. But see that saw mark in there? Down in there? Notice how they're not circular? Uh, look at that. Sure enough. I hadn't seen that before. It was there, but I didn't notice, meaning that it wasn't cut on a circular saw invented in 1835. But, you know, looking at the angle of it, it's at, well, maybe it's at a very, it was cut on a, on a blade water mill like this, the board, originally, before it was hand planed. So, it's prior to 1835 when they invented the circular saw in New England. Interesting. Wow. But look at the dovetail. You dovetailed the corners. Beautiful. Yes. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, it couldn't be better. <laughs> well. Incredible. I'm glad you're, glad you're happy. It looks like this grew on there. <laughs> Wonderful. Beautiful job. Two there was. Days. Yes. Yep. <laughs> quick, quick one. Wow. And you didn't paint the back. Like the original was not painted. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I left the back just the original. Yeah. And, uh. The new wood I actually stained uh, to make it look like the old wood. So all of the new wood that I added, oh, yeah. put yeah. the glue blocks in there. Oh, oh, wow. And it's all stained to match the, oh, wow. the new. Oh, but look at this over here, Kevin. You've got to see, I found a mistake that the craftsman made over here. Okay. He <laughs> slipped with his quarter inch chisel. Right oh, there, look at that. Really? <laughs> As he was cutting, right cutting out the dovetails. He was using a quarter inch chisel and went a little bit past oh, there. Wow. Did you try to hide it? Put no, it wood no. There or yeah, there? he put wood filler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He opened up his can of wood filler. And just, you know, just exactly. With acetone in it. And That's what I was wondering. <laughs> so where are your slips, Frank? I don't uh, see I'm, there are some. Actually, I did have to fill a couple. So. Oh, but you can see the dovetailing. Still wonderful. Now, how old is it? I don't know. I, I would think uh, late 1700s, probably yeah. early 1800s, or earlier. I, it's hard to tell. And you found it in a barn that was that old? Yeah, found it. We actually just found these parts, and Frank did did all this, and that's how it would have looked. We could see the shadow, what's called the ghost, of where this was, and it was missing. Hmm. But I always think, you know, could you imagine? It's probably a young lady had it. You know, she was a sewing chest. We found a mother of pearl buttons in it, but can you imagine if you told her one day she's sitting there sewing by the fireplace that someday her chest would be in Texas, wherever Texas might be. Exactly. 2,000 <laughs> miles away and, and be restored and appreciated by other people. Well, yeah, absolutely. That's well, perfect. You didn't, you didn't overdo it, which is wonderful. You know, it looks like it's original. You know, just the way the nails would have sh shown in the original, you got it, you got it right on.